So good morning, everybody. Thank you for, for taking the time to, uh, to uh, be with us here today um, to go through our lift chairs, range overview and prescription. Um, I know uh, everybody is pretty time poor at the minute, so we uh, really appreciate you taking, taking the time to be with us here today. Um, so the purpose of today's webinar, I guess, is to go through some, some of the um, options in regards to lift chairs that we can offer here at G-Mobility um, and how we prescribe them for different people um, yeah, as we go. Yeah. Um, to the next slide. Yeah, I can get the slideshow going. Yeah. I'm, but for those of who, you who I haven't met before, I'm Jeremy. Yeah. I am um, one of the directors here at G Mobility, and uh, we've got Chris, who's been kind enough to come in and do this presentation for us today. Um, he's very excited to do so. Very excited. To be to happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to give it a go. Yeah. Uh, this is something that's a little bit new for us. We are um, uh, trying to adapt to the new the new normal uh, in terms of the COVID situation at the moment, and uh, presenting via video is something that's pretty new for yeah. us. So be kind. Yes, uh, please. But if you do have any questions, just chuck them in the Q and A as we go. Let me get started. So we've got a bit of a slideshow here that we're going to go through. Um, so we're going to alternate between the, the slideshow and you get to see Jeremy and myself in, in here at different times during the presentation. Um, I guess the idea with the slideshow is to just provide a bit of a, a visual cue um, for you guys and to give you some information as well. So we are just about there, are we? Sending, sending. So, um, I guess we can get started anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, as I said before, today, today's webinar is about lift chairs, basically. Um, I'll give you a little bit of information in regards to G-Mobility for a start. Um, it's a, it's a family-owned company. Uh, Jeremy and Brian, uh, directors of the company, um, started 13 years ago, I was told this morning here in Warrigal in a, in a little hole in the wall that was down, down the road. And that shed. Yeah, that shed. <laughs> and um, it's sort of grown to the point where we have two branches now, um, uh, 16 people on board. There were five when I started and that's only three years ago. So um, the, the growth has been sort of significant in the past, in the past couple of years. Um, we cover uh, basically west of uh, South Gippsland um, and Latrobe Valley, so um, up to Pakenham, down to down to the sea. I spent a lot of time at Wontaggy and Inverloch and those sorts of places. Um, down towards Yen and up as far as Traugham, really. Um, the branches that we have uh, in Warrigal and Morwell, um, where we, we have basically the full range of lift chairs available for, for you to try with your clients. Okay, looks like we've got a slide going here now. So, um, technology's getting the better of me, Chris, but <laughs> I will win. So, we got it? We're good. So, we've gone through slide one. So, slide two, um, we, we talked a bit about. So, I guess today, the the main products that we're going to be covering are the Oscar range of lift chairs. They're really our go-to um, as far as, as supply of lift chairs goes. Um, there's a few reasons for this. They're Australian made, um, which is great for us because we have the ability to customise the chairs um, to suit the client's needs rather than just uh, hoping that the chair will suit the client. So I just want to talk a little bit, Chris, about why it's important that a chair fits someone, particularly in sort of the assistive technology yeah. industry. So, so I guess I guess a lift chair is, is one of the um, the things that people require when their mobility starts to get limited. So um, generally a person that needs a lift chair is going to be spending a fair bit of time in it. So it's important that we get the selection correct for the lift chair so that the person, um, we're not, one, we're not causing any damage by causing any postural issues or anything like that. 
um, and two, that they're comfortable in the chair um, so that they can spend the amount of time that they need to in the chair without there being any issues. Um, there's a few things that we need to cover off, like pressure care, um, positioning and that sort of thing, which we'll go through. Yeah, and that's just, I think, one of the advantages of the Oscar range is that we just have the ability to make those adaptions yeah. and, and make the chair fit someone yeah. a little bit better than perhaps um, something that just comes yeah. out of a box. I often, when I go to do a trial, I'll put somebody in a chair, I'll know it's the wrong size. They sit in it for a couple of minutes and they go, this is fantastic, sign me up, Where can I, when can I get it? And I think we just need to take that time to, to make sure that we are doing the best we can in regards to selecting the correct chair for the client. Yeah. yeah. So um, there's a whole range of models in the Oscar range. Um, and it's not just different looks and different aesthetics. Um, each chair is really sort of um, customised to suit different people. Um, so that, that's another area that's important and where hopefully you guys can rely on us um, to assist in selecting like, the product. Yeah. Yeah. So um, Jeremy's brought up the, the customizations um, slide there. So there's a number of different things we can do to the chairs to make sure that we get the correct fit for the person. So um, basically where I start, and the, the three most important things for me when selecting a lift, a lift chair is seat depth, um, seat height, and, and, and then foot rest length, sort of in that order. Um, if you get the seat depth wrong, um, it can cause all sorts of issues in regards to positioning of the person in the chair. So we really need to start with the hips sitting back as deep as far as we can in the chair. Will I send a slide? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So when you're initially setting someone up in the chair for a trial, particularly if they come into the showroom and it's a cold day, they might have jackets on and that sort of thing. We need to sort of, <laughs> wait, <laughs> no, no. We need to make sure that they're um, not, they're, they're going to be sort of in the clothing that they're going to be sitting in in the home. So sometimes people have shoes on, people have jackets on and that sort of thing. And if they sit in the chair with all these things on, it can make a real difference to, to how they sit in the chair. So we've got to make sure that we get people sort of as they are at home yep. um, um, and then we can sit them in the chair and we can start to sort of go through the process of measuring. Maybe not home. exactly as they <laughs> Not exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If someone plays on would be preferable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, I'll get Jeremy to sit down in the chair now. So immediately we can see um, that the chair is too big for Jeremy. So, um, what, and just go through in a bit of detail yep. why this one would be a bit big for me. Yes, yep. Yeah. So, Jeremy's done a great thing for us there. He's sat in the chair properly. Half the time when people get in a lift chair trial, they're sort of sitting up like this, and then they want us to sort of um, to make the measurement from there. But he's sat in the chair with his hips right back against the backrest. So as far as I can get them, I'd say there's still probably, and you might this might not come through on camera, mm -hmm. there's a little bit of a gap still behind my hips at the moment, yeah. perhaps because I think the seat depth would be a bit is, large. Is a bit large. Yeah. So a good way to determine the seat depth um, is to have your hand there behind the calf so that you can, you, you need to really feel a finger's width behind in between the seat and the back of the car. Um, the other thing that you need to do is to stick your hand down behind the back sometimes and feel if there's any clearance between the backrest and, and... And I can sort of force myself back in this, yeah. this seat. Yeah. This is a C-sized recliner we're working with here. Yeah. Um, but uh, I've got quite a lot of pressure, Chris, at the moment on the back yeah. of my, my palms. Yeah. Um, probably too much to be comfortable for any period of time. Yeah. So, so, so that can cause a couple of issues, like people will not generally sit in a chair that's too deep for them the way Jeremy's sitting in the chair. What they'll do is they'll sit like that slouch and that does a couple of things. It, it sort of tilts, tilts the hips um, um, and it makes the... I can the, feel, I reckon my back would get sore yeah. over time sitting in this... Yeah, so position. because you're not getting any lumbar support behind the back there. so. So that can be that can be problematic. So I think a deeper seat depth is 
probably worse than too narrow a seat depth. Yeah. Um, because you can cause all those sorts of issues. Um, some people have their, and I've done it before, where I've supplied a chair to somebody um, at their request that they want a deeper seat depth than what I would recommend. And the first thing they do is they get the chair and put a pillow behind their back, which isn't ideal. Yeah. What we're trying to do is provide a good surface for the people to sit in so that their, their posture is supported, not so that, that they're making adjustments with pillows and that sort of thing. So, yeah. so a good fit then, yeah. we're talking about contact at the back of the contact, pelvis. Yeah. And we're talking about light contact or a very small gap yeah. behind the car. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so once you've got that set up, everything else sort of flows from that. So um, the, the next thing I look at is for the seat height. So we can see there that Jeremy's um, his feet are off the floor in a, in a seated position. Um, in the same way that it's slouching backwards with a deeper seat depth, you sort of can, you do the opposite thing if your feet are too high off the ground. Your, your hips tend to, to go forward and you're looking for, for the floor with your feet. Um, uh, I guess it's important when people sit in that sort of position for a long period of time, it's a question that I often ask is, do you sit with your feet up or do you, um, you, you normally sit with your feet down? Um, particularly for people that, that give me that answer, that they're sitting like that for the seat height um, is very important. So, yeah. so when we're talking about a good fit in terms of seat to floor height, Chris, yeah. um, feet on the ground? Feet on the ground, yep. Um, yep, just a, and sort of, again, um, the right amount of pressure yeah. underneath those, yeah. um, those upper legs. Yeah, underneath the thighs there. Yeah. Um, that's where the question of shoes comes into, comes into, the, into the conversation, I guess. We've got to make sure that um, people aren't wearing 10 inch platform shoes when we're doing the trial. So, um, yeah, so that's important. I guess the other thing is with floor to seat height, um, the chairs sort of tilt forward as they lift and if somebody finds it very difficult to stand up, if they've got problems with their knees and that sort of thing, and um, they, they have trouble standing up, we, we need to make sure that floor to seat height is good because the higher we can get it, the easier it will be for them to stand. I would say though, Chris, that um, from time to time we have people transitioning out of their standard chairs yep. at home and they need to, needed to make them quite tall yep. to facilitate a transfer. Yep. And coming into the purchase of a lift chair, they come to us and say, well, what I really want is a nice tall chair yep. so that way I can get out of it. Yep. And um, we have to, well, I guess explain that this has got mechanical features that can can assist you. Can assist with that. The, the yeah, and, and and that if people haven't used the lift chair before, using that mechanical um, uh, advantage to, to lift yourself up, it can require a bit of training and a bit of getting used to for people to. Um, to get across it, so yeah. I just realised I could probably use like a little cap and a, um, a, a, a smoking pipe. Smoking pipe for this demonstration. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll improve for next time. Yeah. yeah. So as far as um, I guess from there, I'll move on to um, to footrest length, which is which is important. So Jeremy's sitting in what we call a dual mode with chair here. So um, what he can do is he can actually lift his feet up independently of the backrest doing anything. So anywhere where on your body where there's um, a minimal amount of you know, uh, meat between bones and skin, um, there's an area that, that pressure injuries can develop. So what we want as far as lift chair selection is to have the heels off the end of the footrest there. Um, we don't want the heels resting on top of the footrest because it, it, it can create pressure injuries. The other thing having the heels off the end of the footrest does is it supports you under the car. So you've got a bigger surface area of support underneath your legs, which, which can be important also. Um, some people, a lot of our clients that, that need lift chairs, edema in the legs is a, is a problem. So having those feet up in a position where the legs are supported for, for a significant amount of time during the day, is really important and um, we can do a few things to make the footrest a bit more suitable for people that have 
um, issues with their legs and that sort of thing. There's some some foams and that sort of thing we can do in regards to to making the surface softer. Yeah. Um, but but we really need to make sure that those heels are in the right position. Um, some people feel that that's not not the way to be done, but we need to sort of convince them that it is. So yeah. 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 So when we're talking about a good fit in terms of footrest length. Yep. Um, support along the duration of yeah. the Achilles, yep. but not out onto the heels, yep. typically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the, my experience has been, Chris, that the, um, how do I say this, if you support all the way along to the heel, but not right under that heel bone, mm. it does a pretty good job of um, taking care of some of that foot drop we see yeah. in some of our clients. Yep. Um, that if you can mimic that curvature that's created along your Achilles right along to just before that bone, that spot where the pressure would really develop, yep. um, that's a really ideal fit. Now, people move around in these chairs yeah, a, little, a little bit as well, um, foams and fibres they sell, we we um, need to also provide a little bit of education to our clients on where their legs should be sitting yep. on the leg rest because they can influence that, I guess. Yeah. Is that fair assessment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say, look, the more we can sort of tell, like, most people don't think about where they sit. I know certainly before I started working here, I had no idea and all my, my furniture at home is not fit for purpose, I can tell you. <laughs> it's just, uh, and I slump in it and I think to myself, what am I doing here? I should know better. But um, we can't expect our clients to be across all this sort of stuff. And I think any education we can give them is really helpful. So, yeah. 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 Okay, so we've spoken a little bit about seat depth. Seat height, yep. foot rest length. Yep. What, so what's your take on seat width in uh, lift chairs there? So seat width is um, it's probably not as important as it would be in, say, a manual wheelchair where somebody's using their arms to self-propel. Um, in, in, say, a manual wheelchair, you really want a snug fit on the hips so that when people are using their shoulders, it's pushing down rather than having their arms out like that. Um, not so important in a lift chair. Um, obviously, they need to fit. Um, so we need to make sure that the chair is wide enough um, that the person can fit in it. Um, but the, the width of the chair is not so critical as it would be in other sort of applications. Um, some people want to have their, you know, their spoodle sitting beside them on the, on the chair at night, and that's, that's a real priority for them. So I think we, we need to sort of ask the clients what, what they want in regards to seat width. Um, seat width, I think you'd agree, is um, first and foremost, like you said, about fitting the person in there. Yeah. But perhaps the the second thing is encouraging good arm yeah. posture. Yeah. You know, um, and we've got a little bit of inside baseball here, but the um, the mechanism inside all of the different lift yeah. chair, all of the different Oscar lift chairs, um, mini A, B, and C is the same size, and there's constraints on how narrow you can make the chair yeah. be, because of that. Um, so uh, we have a little bit of control over the width of the chair, but not a not a great yeah. deal, and the clinical importance. As you said, I think it's just not, yeah. not quite as important. Yes, yeah. so. right, we've, we've all had the clients that's, you know, a little little lady sort of this this tall. Um, we can do waterfall arms on the armrest, which bring, bring the armrests in. It doesn't actually change the width of the chair itself. So um, the width of the chair stays the same. So to get to, to get those, those armrests in a little bit, um, they put a bit of foam on the inside of the armrest there, and that's how we achieve that. So yeah, um, so yeah, width adjustments are always achieved by subtracting or adding foam. Yeah, and that can be important yeah. to consider sometimes as well. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but I guess if the, if the armrests are too far apart, and then the armrest heights aren't correct, that can cause an issue. So if people are either sitting up like this because the armrest is too high, that can cause a problem. Conversely, if they're too low, people tend to slouch, particularly if there's a little bit more width in the in the chair than than is than is ideal. So we always want people to be sitting in a 
but as good a postural position as we can. So having having um, the armrest is, is sort of reasonably important, I guess. Yeah. Um, to me, armrest height is, is a little bit more important than width. So. Yeah, both of them come into that, yeah. that sort of um, accommodating a good posture. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back height. Um, back height. So back height is, is reasonably important as well. Um, the chair Jeremy's sitting in at the moment is what we call a Barwon um, Oscar chair. It's got three back rolls in it. Um, I wonder if we can get it so they can see that. Is that coming through okay, Jamie? Yeah. So a good rule of thumb for me um, in regards to backrest height, when Jeremy sits in the chair, um, his collarbone is about equal with that top roll and the oh, backrest. I am being a good uh, demonstrator. <laughs> So to me, that's probably just a touch high. It's not too bad, mm. um, um, but we really want some lumbar support down the bottom section of the back. Um, that second back roll sort of um, supports behind the shoulder blades there, and then the headrest support um, supports the head, obviously. As the chair reclines back, you'll tend to find that people's heads sort of move down conversely with the lift chair. Um, so. It can be too short is probably a little bit better than too long, but we want to get it right as we can. Yeah. Um, the, there's different options in regards to backrest um, backrest that we can offer. So I don't think we've got a Hudson oh, here. We've got a Hudson. Yeah. We'll um, see that later in the slide deck yeah, anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, so there's a couple of different options in regards to backrest, but backrest height basically, if you've got it at the shoulders there. Um, it's it's a pretty good sort of rule of thumb. So, um, because you're not here and you can't touch and feel all of this, I'll, I'll just yeah. go over a little bit uh, about what's going on in these backrest rolls. We've got one quite, uh, so this is the Oscar Barwin chair, and I think we sell um, nine out of ten, I reckon. Nine out of ten yep. of the lift chairs that we sell would be an Oscar Barwin of some var variation. Yep. Um, it seems to work pretty well because it has got a nice firm foam section down in the bottom, um, down in the bottom here, with two blow fill um, rolls up the top here, and it's really nice. Um, it, it seems to work well for accommodating most people because you need firm support back behind your hips mm -hmm. there, yeah. but it's nice that your shoulder blades can immerse into this Dacron filling mm -hmm. that you, um, you yep. feel here. Yeah. And that, um, because you, the backrest moves around differently in relation to your back, mm -hmm. um, you, this seems to do a pretty good job, I think, Chris, of accommodating, accommodating, yeah. Yeah, accommodating your, your shoulder blades yeah. as you move. Yeah. So, so there's a couple of little tricks that we can do as well in regards to getting people comfortable with their backrest. Sometimes I've, I've sort of had the feedback that this top pillow is pushing people's head forward as they're sitting in the chair. Um, that actually just has a zip underneath here. Um, and we can remove or add blow fill to these two cushions, which can help us make um, the person a bit more comfortable. And you'd be surprised that just taking a little bit out of that, that head roll there can make a huge difference to people. So yep. um, conversely, yeah, conversely, um, we've got a, a head pillow here so that if people aren't getting enough support behind their neck and they've got that um, posture, um, where they're hunched over a bit and we need to provide a bit better contact with the backrest, um, we've got the option of, uh, of putting a head pillow there. It's also good when people are reclining back and they're watching TV, that sort of thing where they need to have their head forward a bit, having that neck pillow behind the, the head there can make a real difference. Um, bunch of times I've sat people in a lift chair and they sort of uh, uh, put the head pillow in, oh that's uh, it. Yes. This is good, I think, this design that allows you to adjust the head pillow based on the yeah. amount of recline that you've got as well. Yeah. Just, uh, you can't always get this head roll in the right spot, yeah. but you can always move this yeah. to accommodate something. And as, as we know, everybody's a different shape. Like two people can be five foot eight and they can be completely different in their torso and leg length dimensions. And, and that's another reason why it's important that we we can we can accommodate them with the customizations of the, of the chair, you know. So, um, yeah, yeah. 
So we've covered off seat depth, seat width, seat height, footrest length, arm height, and back height. They're the key customizations that we see on our Oscar range of lift chairs. Will we just continue with the slide deck? Yeah. Yep. We'll come back to some of this stuff as we're talking about the different styles of chair that we've got. We've basically covered the, the, the sort of initial basics of, of selecting a lift chair and the things that we can do to it. Um, but we'll talk about the different models a bit later and see if um, we, we can uh, get a bit more in depth with that. Yep. Um, we've recently um, started doing a scripting sheet on site when we're um, doing trials and here in the showroom. Um, this is something that like, we're always trying to improve our processes here. Um, this is something that's come about because we've had um, uh, we just, it's, it can be a reasonable time frame between doing the trial and supplying the chair. And sometimes um, people sort of don't really remember what happened at the trial and that sort of thing. If we've got this scripting sheet, we can fill it out on the day. It does a couple of things. It, it it's, makes it very clear to the client what we're looking to supply. Um, it helps them understand what we've talked about and what they've done. Yep. They don't know what a dual motor is or what seat depth adjustment is and that sort of thing. And it just gives us a point form to go through with them. Um, um, it what makes us doing. ask all the right all questions as well. We don't get anything as well. So that, that, that has happened from time to time. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, if we've got this, this paperwork and it's something that's, that's sort of um, the client signed off on, um, it's, it gives us, you know, a, a firm thing as to what we've quoted. Um, it's not an obligation to buy or anything like that. All it is, it's for our records and we, we put it on our system. Um, we double check when the order comes in against the scripting sheet that the two things are the same. If there's any questions that come up at the time, we try and address them before the chair's ordered and gets to the client and it, it is incorrect. So um, that's just something that we, we've started doing in the last month or so. I think it's been a, a really good thing. So For everyone involved. Um, yeah, I think and Jay, Jamie's come up with that for us. So and, uh, she's done a fantastic job on it. So, yeah. um, so that would be uh, available, if it's not already, it will be available for uh, download from the resources section of our website. Yeah. Um, if you have any um, any questions about the types of different things that you could do to an Oscar lift chair? This is a really good resource yeah. for therapists as well. I yeah, think. and it's not it's not like a wheelchair script form where it's twenty eight pages of options that most of them aren't relevant to you. We've we've distilled it down to to the basic things for the Oscar lift chair range. So yeah, um, yeah it's it's a really good resource. So um, I guess. Prior to a trial, prior to um, asking us for a trial either in the showroom or on site, um, the more information you can give us, the better in regards to a person's height and weight, I guess, are the two main things. We're not really looking for full measurements or anything like that. Um, so there's a few basic sort of um, outlines there for the different sizes of lift chairs. So you can see a mini there. Uh, would suit would likely suit a person that's 147 to 157 AB and, and C and so it goes. So that's really good that Oscar have provided that guidance. I yep. think um, it takes a bit of the guesswork out if we can get a rough height yep. and a weight to yep. ensure that we're going to, um, you know, the chair is going to support the weight yep. of the user. Um, that information gives us a really good foundation to uh, a good starting yeah. point. But also, it also ensures a successful trial or it, it, it increases the chances of a successful trial, particularly if we're doing one on site where there's not, we don't have all the options of the lift chairs available for people to try. Um, if, if we can be provided with the basic information, it means I'm going to be a better chance of bringing the correct size chair. Um, when people sit in something and it's immediately close to what they want, um, they're, they're much more likely to be happy with the decision to get a chair rather than us putting a tiny person in a C-sized chair. And just imagine it's like this, it's, it doesn't work that well. So uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So. Talk a little bit about um, how we can facilitate a trial at G-Mobility yeah. here, Chris. Yeah, so. I guess uh, the way it's sort of worked in the past is people have emailed us. Um, 
um, with the with the client's details, um, requesting a trial with with the occupational therapist. There's a couple of ways we can do it. Um, in store trials. Uh, not a bad way to do it because we have the full range available and we can uh, we, we can assist people like that. The other way we can do it in, in the way I normally do it is I bring chairs to a person's home. Um, normally bring a couple with me, not always, but normally, um, so that we've got a bit of comparative point against the, the, the two chairs and we can provide those trials in the person's home. So yeah. Um, I would do, I don't know, eight or ten trials a week, something like that. Wouldn't I have a lift chair, something like that? So, quite a few. yeah, quite a few. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, the um, in home trial is a necessity for some of our yeah, clients. Yeah, it is, yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, we're very happy to, to facilitate that here at G Mobility. Yep. Um, if the clients, if your clients can travel to our showroom, there's an advantage for them. Um, in that they will see the whole range every time. Yep. Um, it, you can only fit so much stuff in a van, you can only haul so much stuff in and out of someone's home. Yeah, yeah. So I guess I guess ideally the showroom trial is the go, but if that's not something that, that's possible, more than happy to come out and, and help you in someone's house. So um, yeah, uh, we don't charge for trials. So yep. um, we, we build it into sort of the, the price of the chair, that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, so there's no obligation to buy. I don't think I sell very hard or anything when I'm at these things. So um, it's, it's purely about getting the, the result for the clock. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Fabrics. Um, it's reasonably important to me to select the correct sort of fabric. Um, I guess, I guess the main sort of things we ask in regards to fabric selection um, would be uh, continence problems, that sort of thing. So if a person's incontinent, we've got a fabric range that, that we supply that um, can, can cope with that. Um, and the other the other sort of thing is comfort for the for the end user. So um, and the fabric does have an impact on the comfort of yeah. the chair as well as the aesthetics, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. So um, Look, most of the chairs that we supply tend to be in the suede sort of fabric. Um, tends to be the most popular one. Um, it's a nice soft feeling fabric, so it's not firm or hard or anything like that. Um, oh, here we go. Yeah. So, so there's a few different fabric ranges. There's um, the Fusion, which is the one that we use for, for pressure care. Um, it's also waterproof, the Fusion material. Um, there's the Suede, there's Vinyl, there's Monza. So the Monza material is like a, a fabric sort of a material. Um, and then there's Vinyl. So those are the four sort of fabrics that we have that are available as part of the standard fabric range of, of the Oscar chairs. Yeah, so, so there's no um, no upcharge for yeah. vinyl. Yeah. So I think you can have a chair in in vinyl, suede, the sort of soft touch Monza type yeah. fabrics or a combination fusion um, and typically I think yeah, dog fabric fuse. or whatever on the outside. Yeah, something yeah. a bit harder wearing on the outside yeah. of the chair. Yeah. Um, all of that could be included in the standard price. Yep. Um, there are leather options available. Yep. We'll, we'll clad a chair or upholster a chair, I should say, in leather for you. Mm. There's not charge for that. And it typically runs out at $750, $800. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's uh, reasonably expensive. Uh, bucks, yeah. And obviously um, funding, we typically see that the funding bodies aren't covering the yeah. charge to a leather type. I've only ever sort of done a couple of leather chairs. Mm. Um, they look really nice. Look, oh, it's beautiful leather and it's really nice. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's it's a fairly hefty ask, I think. Mean, yeah. So yeah. yeah. Um, but the options are there for people that absolutely want it. So yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Single oh, motor and sorry. dual motor. Oh, just quickly, Chris, there was a question that came through there yeah. that just said, yeah, does, does the fabric really affect how a chair feels? Yeah, it does. Um, uh, so we, as far as the fabric goes, when we're dealing with people that have got 
risk of pressure injuries and that sort of thing, we, we recommend the fusion material, um, often in combination with, with the memory foam underneath. Um, that provides a real supple and soft surface for the person to sit in um, and can help alleviate some of those, those pressure concerns that the people have. Um, that is the main sort of uh, thing that we offer that's different from the other fabrics is the fusion material. Yeah. Um, the, other, the other three sort of fabrics are, are sort of more an aesthetic and a feel sort of thing. Um, but if we're, we're looking to accommodate somebody's pressure care concerns, we would go with the fusion material. So, the, yeah, I think the clinical reasons yeah. for fabric choice are surrounding incontinence yeah. and pressure care yeah. usually. Uh, just like uh, sitting on any sort of pressure yeah. care cushion, the thing that you have between uh, or the medium that you have between the pressure surface and the person yeah. affects the way it performs. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If the um, material that you have got between the, the pressure surface does not stretch and conform to the body, yeah. it's going to impact the performance of the memory foams yeah. in this case. Uh, underneath. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, so the fusion material as well, you can wipe it down. So it's it's waterproof as well. So anytime we're looking at um, a job for a hospital or a care facility or something like that, we would nine nine out of ten recommend a fusion material mm. um, because it has any microbial qualities, any bacterial. Um, great for infection control. Great for infection control and that sort of thing. So um, can look a little bit clinical in the home, I guess. Um, Air Comfort has that fusion sort of material on it. We'll get we'll get to that sort of thing on the track a bit there. So, did I answer the the question? Sorry, I didn't see who posted that. But look, if there's any other questions, um, just just pop them oh, yeah. as you go. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so there's. Um, Another another option that we can offer with the lift chairs is for them to either be a single motor lift chair or a dual motor lift chair. What that um, relates to is the amount of electric actuators in the chair that do the work. Um, so they've been very tricky in the way that they've designed the mechanism that they've managed to get seat lift, foot raise and recline all out of one electric actuator, which I reckon is pretty, pretty tricky. Um, so a single motor lift chair, the way it operates, the feet will come up first and then the back will recline. Um, you don't get as much recline out of a single motor lift chair as a dual motor lift chair. Um, however, it can be good for people that have cognitive issues, that sort of thing, where we're having more than just two buttons to operate the chair can be challenging. So um, a single motor lift chair is also a good option in a home that hasn't got much space um, because they've got a wall saving mechanism in them. So when the chair reclines back, it doesn't go back a, hell, a, a long way. Yeah. You know, can stop it impacting against the wall, which can be, you know, somebody in a small unit or something like that, that can be a concern. So um, I guess the advantage of having a dual motor lift chair is that you can have much more um, variance in the positions that you can get into. You can lift your feet up a small amount and you can recline back a long way or, or, or the opposite sort of thing. So you basically got, you know, an infinite amount of positions you can get into with the dual motor lift chair. For whatever reason, the dual motor footrest so seems to come out just that little yeah, bit further. A little bit more. Uh, and although the single motor mechanism is very good at allowing you to sit relatively upright yeah. with your legs out, yeah. um, if you really want to sit in an upright posture with your legs quite elevated, there's yeah. no substitute for a dual motor. Yeah. Yeah. Conversely, if people can't sit up straight, they need to have their hips open a bit. Um, with the dual motor chair, you can just recline the backrest back a bit and you can you can increase that angle that the person sits in sort of from the get-go. Mm. So um, you can be sitting like that with the chair in a bit of recline without having to have the feet up, which can be handy for some people. I think as long as you've got the space to accommodate yeah. it 
and the person is capable of doing so, a dual motor is a really good, yep. um, a, a, a operating it I should say, a dual motor is a really good option. Yep. The um, the additional positioning options are, mm. can be really, really helpful. Mm. Um, it's those people that um, cognitively might struggle with an extra set of buttons where yep. they need to watch out. Or space, space. space constraints as well. Yep. The other thing a dual motor chair can do is it can go out basically flat. Um, the single motor with chair doesn't have that, doesn't have that ability. So yeah. um, for people that really need to lie out for whatever reason, um, a dual motor is, is is the way to go. Um, they've recently changed the, the the actuators and the controls in these chairs. We now have a USB port. Hang on, I'll see if we can I can make us big. So they've recently changed the controllers on these lift chairs. So um, we have a backlit controller now so that we can see that see it at night. Um, and we've also got a USB port in the end of the in the end of the controller there. So that can be handy for charging your phone or whatever you want to do. I don't know about anybody else, but I've got power cords running everywhere for all the devices at my place. So having that having that thing there can be can be handy. Um, just in regards to the controllers as well, um, these chairs do come with uh, what, a battery backup. So there's two nine volt batteries that are that are in the control box or in the in the side, depending on what we're looking at. So, <laughs> so two nine volt batteries go into the transformer there. So what that is, it's sort of a safety mechanism for if you lose power. So if you've lost power, your feet are up in the air, somebody tries to get out of the lift chair, um, it's sort of a recipe for disaster really. Um, we need to be able to cover off that, that, that sort of event happening. So what they do is they have two nine volt batteries in there, you will get one lift out of that, out of that pair of batteries. After so you've had that lift? That's it, yeah. yeah. So um, it's, it's really important that we, we um, tell people about it when we deliver the chair, that we make sure that there's batteries in it when we deliver the chair. I generally tell people to change them over when they change their smoke alarm batteries. Um, and, and that's sort of a good way to good way to to make sure that you've got that ability to get out of the chair should you happen to lose power. Yeah. yeah. I've forgotten what this one is, what are we? Oh yes, okay. So getting back to sort of pressure, pressure concerns and that sort of thing, we do have the option to put um, a soft layer memory foam into the into the chair. Jeremy's just running off to grab it now. Um, we can put that memory foam in the seat base, we can put it in the backrest, we can also put it in the footrest. So um, it's a reasonably high density foam that, that comes in the chairs as standard. Um, that softer memory foam can be particularly good if you're scripting a chair that's leather. Um, having that, that softer foam underneath the seat base can really make it that bit more comfortable. Um, so Jeremy's got the standard sort of, um, is that the standard one? Or? No, this is the memory foam here, Chris. Yep. Uh, and it's just a really slow release foam. I wonder if that comes through on camera, okay. So, um, yeah, it's sort of, uh, I don't know if any of you have felt our, our beds, the, the eye care beds that we do, they have a memory foam mattress on them. And it's, it's a very similar sort of a foam. It just allows for a little bit more immersion when you're sitting in the seat. And it's just not quite as firm as, as, the, as the standard foam. So I think they do it in combination with the harder underneath today. Is it just yeah. something that sits on top? Yep. So we're going to um, take a bit of the high resilience foam yep. out of the chair, stick a bit of this on yep. top. Um, and we end up with again sort of a layered approach yeah. to the mattress. So, so we can replace the, the lower backrest <laughs> portion of the bow and chair here with that memory foam. We can do the seat base, we can do the footrest, and I think we can do armrests. Yeah. Um, don't, don't do it a hell of a lot. 
But for people, I always ask, how's that seat base for you? Is it is it comfortable or would you like something a bit softer? Yeah. So um, getting back to the footrest thing with the with the pressure care along the legs as well, if we've got people that very tender legs, that sort of thing, we can put that memory foam in the footrest there um, and that can make that a bit more comfortable and a bit softer for people as well. So, yep. What else have we got here? So, um, a B24 chair is basically a version of the Barwon chair that can be wheeled around. So, um, a facility, that sort of thing where you're looking to, to wheel someone from, from their room out to a common area, that sort of thing. Um, B24 is, is a good option for that. You get bigger wheels with it, a push handle and um, a battery battery pack in it that will operate the chair for a couple of days. Yeah. So um, it's basically the same battery pack that we have in our patient lifters, so basically the same electronics. So yeah, um, yeah. really good in facilities. Yep. Yeah. Um, people who like to get into their lift chair in their room and then perhaps go out to a common area yeah. or something something like that, yeah. but still require the comfort of a... Um, Wouldn't too often do it in a house or anything like that. Yeah, they're, they're, just not built they're, built. they're just not built for it, but yeah, in a facility, um, they can certainly... Most facilities would have a couple of that sort of chair floating around so I suppose it's a good time Chris to talk about the fact that the Oscar lift chairs have casters on them yeah but um, perhaps the those casters are suitable only for moving the chair when it's not occupied yeah so definitely definitely difficult <laughs> and not recommended to try and move somebody around in a chair with the standard casters on it Basically, it helps me lift them in and out of people's homes. Yeah. And cleaning. <laughs> and cleaning and that sort of thing. So yeah. um, we, we are wary about the surface that we're putting the chair on when we're in somebody's home. Um, I would often say to people if they've got a, a polished floor or something like that, we need to figure a better way of securing the chair um, because the, the casters can move around on a surface like that and they can skate around a bit. There's a couple of ways we can do that. We can either remove the casters, we can put some glides on the chair, which, which would bring it to the standard height again. Um, or I found a, a few things like from Bunnings that are just like these, um, a little concave cup thing that you can put the wheels into and they stop the chairs moving around. So yeah. the last thing you want is somebody who has trouble sitting down and standing up, pushing back on their chair and the chair moving away from underneath them. So yeah. but it's just another thing that we need to be wary of. Just, uh, just talk about the lift mechanism there as well, Jeremy. So, so when we put the chair into a lifted position, what actually happens is a bar comes down at the front of the chair. You're probably not going to be able to see it. I'll explain it anyway. Um, that pushes down against the floor. So it actually lifts the front wheels off the ground. So. Um, so the, the chair frame itself pushes down against the floor so that there's no chance of the chair moving around. So um, that, that's just something to remember when, when we're looking at chairs. Yep. Okay, so we're sort of getting into some of the, the different variants of, of chairs that we would look at for people with specific sort of issues. So um, we've got a, a vertical lift chair there. I've only done a few of them in my time here. Um, basically they're for people really doing side transfers and that sort of thing from wheelchairs. Um, and we need to accommodate different heights in the chair to, to do that side transfer. Um, you've got a couple of options with these chairs in regards to removable armrests. You can either have drop down arms or the armrest can be pulled up and removed completely. I found the drop the drop down arms not to be. It's a bit a bit sketchy yeah. trying to transfer across yeah. that drop down yeah. arm. Um, with that said, if you've got a very um, very light mm -hmm. but potentially frail client, mm -hmm. my experience has been that. Um, 
sometimes they have trouble removing the armrest and putting yeah. it somewhere that they yeah. can safely get. And the drop down arms, your only uh, your yeah. only option. Yeah. 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 So the vertical lift chair goes straight up and down. Um, there is an option for, for tilt with it as well. So you can lift the chair up and then tilt forward. Um, that can be good for a person that's maybe particularly tall and we need to raise up that floor to seat height or for somebody that really has poor mobility with their knees um, and they can't get their legs underneath themselves to stand up with a, with a normal sort of a lift chair. That vertical height can lift you up a bit higher, tilt forward and then they can stand up. So um, it's really a specific sort of a, a, a application for that. So really, well, I see the vertical lift chair it, uh, to be different from the other, it's not really a, a, a lift chair in the traditional no. sense, in that it's not for people who are needing uh, aid with standing, but usually they can't stand at all. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's for facilitating slide transfers. Yes. Yeah. So um, you can get a vertical lift mechanism in the standard sort of range of lift chairs. It does decrease the weight capacity of the chair. Um, but it is an option if, um, if if you want to go down that path. So yeah. Okay, waterfall arms. So this comes back to seat width and what we were talking about before. Um, if we want to narrow up the seat depth, uh, the seat width for somebody, we can offer waterfall arms. So there. It's a separate sort of piece that comes over the top here. It's integrated into the chair, but it's just a, an extra sort of padding bit on the side there. Um, I did a trial with somebody with one of our demo chairs yesterday. They loved it yeah. because it sort of they got a real nice snug feeling in against themselves. Uh, makes yeah. the chair soft on the makes inside. Makes the chair soft on the inside. On the inside, yeah. inside there. Yeah. Um, so people do that to make the chair narrower. Yeah. People do it. For aesthetics. Yeah, aesthetics as well, yeah. Some people like <laughs> that sort of puffy sort of furniture look. Yeah. Yeah, so, so that is an option. It's not one I've scripted a hell of a lot, um, but if people really want that sort of narrow seat width, we can we can do that. Um, Roho cutout option for these chairs. So if we've got somebody with significant pressure injuries or issues or whatever, what they do is they cut out a section of the, the seat there, so that the top of the row home cushion is level with the top of the um, the seat there. So we're not altering our floor to seat height by putting in uh, a, an extra cushion. Um, so a row home cushion is four inches. Um, if we're adding four inches to a standard seat, it's got to it's got to throw all of our all of our other measurements out. So um, we do have the ability to put in a cutout for for a row home, but. Typically speaking, uh, my experience has been that um, people prefer the more integrated yeah. approach of the air comfort yeah. lift chair yeah. than um, trying to put a Roho into the, um, the Oscar yeah. furniture lift chairs. Yeah. Um, just less complexity in terms yeah. of adjustment and, and things like that. I haven't done a whole, I've done a few, but yeah. not a whole lot of... I've only um, done it where people have specifically sort of requested it. It's not something that I I would offer as a solution to something. Because I think there's a better option. There's a better option, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, gluteal recess is a, is a bit of an interesting one. It sort of comes more into when I'm looking at a, a client that would be suitable for the M5, which is the, the larger sort of lift chair. Um, the gluteal recess is basically a cutout in that back lower, lower cushion there to accommodate the backside when you sit down. You can tell if somebody needs it when they sit in the chair and their backside's right against the back of the chair and their back's still not contacting the backrest. Um, we, we, we have a rough measurement sort of for that. Um, that, that we take at the time. So I normally have a look at the, the space between the back and the back rest and I sort of accommodate that into the gluteal recess part of the thing there. So a gluteal recess, two ways of doing a gluteal recess. Yep. If you think about it logically, we can take foam out yep. of the bottom one well, or we can, we can put blow fill into the top. Into the top. And what we've got to do is get a rough measurement. Yep. 
and then um, build the blow fill out to, yeah, to accommodate. So a good way to, to sort of replicate that if we're trialling a chair is we can remove the lower backrest um, when when we're doing the trial and see if that makes any difference to the comfort of the, the chair. So and the adjustable features of the chair are really important there because you know trying to simulate that yeah. in a trial can be challenging. Yeah. I reckon. Okay, <laughs> vertical back. I've never done. Have you ever done one of them? Uh, I, I, uh, no, no. <laughs> there you go. No. Um, I guess it's for people that, that really need a, a straight up and down. They need a heap of support for their back. Um, I have had some clients that like to sit with the chair and a little bit of lift. I guess that sort of situation might be someone where that vertical back is um is appropriate. Um, Concave backrests and concave leg rests can actually be a, a pretty good option to consider. Um, so a concave backrest is going to provide a little bit of lateral support in the chair um, and a little bit of positioning help, I guess. So if you've got people that are slouching right over and that sort of thing, it can help with that. Is there any other sort of... Uh, so the, the concave backrest is great or as you suggested, providing postural support yeah. for the trunk. Yeah. Um, the footrest shaping there um, does two things. One is they use that really thick memory foam. Yeah. Or if you want to, let me see if I can do this. They will use really thick gel foam. Um, and this is beautiful, soft foam. Uh, Mm, similar to memory foam, but it's just really. So I guess pressure care benefits and that sort of thing. Great, well. for, yep. great for pressure care, great for postural support for those who need it for their legs. Yeah. You know, we've got people who um, need assistance maintaining good leg posture, and that's a, a option to option to sort of achieve that. Yeah. Yeah. And arm covers. Yeah, so um, head and arm covers. So they're basically square pieces of fabric material. That, that we can put over the armrest and the headrest. As we as we sort of sit in the chair, those are the areas that aren't clothed generally that are contacting the chair. People sweat. Um, Sometimes people we find have um, with skin issues, yeah. dermatitis yeah. Or, or other things like that. Yeah. They tend to use a lot of products on their skin yeah. um, and that can over time break down the quality of particularly yeah. the micro suede. Yeah, yeah, the suede material. Um, yeah. And it can be nice to keep the chair nicer for longer yeah. um, to have some, some covers in place. Yeah. Same um, yeah, hair products yeah. and things like that. Yep. You know. Yeah. So um, I generally offer them as a as a thing when we're doing a trial. I, I personally like the unfitted arm covers. We do have some fitted arm covers that go over the top here. Um, they've got a hole in the front and they fit over the top. I, I don't know, I just prefer the other ones. So, yeah. But it's up to you guys. We've got you know, both options. Options there. there. They'll also, um, Oscar will do Velcro on arm covers oh, for, yeah. for you. Yep. Um, if you if you like just being aware that you're going to have Velcro stitched on to your chair, so with the arm covers off, yep. you have these two big Velcro strips that you um, it does stop them moving around and that sort of thing, but doesn't it? It does. Yeah. yeah, you can just stick them on there, and they they sort of just work. So I guess with the with the fitted covers, the thing that that I'm sort of against with them is they drop past this this pocket here so that people can find it difficult to find the pocket to put the controller in and that sort of thing so it's just yeah uh, chris we've just had a question from kerry hi chris and jeremy yep. are recliner chairs available with a rocking motion available i have a client who would benefit from a new chair but wants to be able to still rock in it to keep up his movement and leg strength that is a good question yes so yes. um the, the answer is yes you can have the oscar barwin and hudson chairs made in a rocker mm -hmm. the disadvantage is you will lose the lift mechanism yeah you lose the lift mechanism so yeah i'm figuring there carry what you want is both um yeah. and i would think that's not possible that's yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's sort of a one or the other i hope yeah. that answers your question yeah headrests um, these can make or break a chair, I've found, <laughs> as, as silly as it seems. Um, uh, 
that that little headrest pillow there can make all the difference to, to a person's comfort when they're sitting in the chair, particularly if they're in a reclined position or if they've got that, that posture where, they, where their head's forward. Um, yeah, so. A lot of our clients have got pain, back pain yep. and neck pain, yep. and um, the fit of the backrest is one of the most important uh, things in terms of the comfort of the chair. Yep. The headrest is just so helpful to be able to stick in there. We've got different sizes. Yep. We can move it around as is necessary. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, and particularly if you're, you're sitting up and you need a little bit of support, um, but having the ability to move that, that headrest down the back of the chair is good when you want to recline um, because our relationship with, with the backrest sort of changes as we, as we recline the chair. So, um, so we've got... So two different styles of, of headrests there. They're both sort of kidney-shaped ones. There are some some ones that are more like a a, a, a roll type of arrangement. But um, what is that? Five different options. A B C D E. And they don't go in size order. No, which and is a, clever. Yes, yeah. clever. They're yeah. just different shapes. So. Yeah. Um, if you want a big one, it's not necessarily an E. No. In fact, I think an E might be the smallest. Yeah. And the second I think smallest the C's, would be B. I think the C is the biggest one. This is the C here, and it yeah. seems like a whopper. Yeah. So the dimensions for those headrests are on the Oscar website. So if you're trying to select a headrest and you want to know what sort of size it is, those dimensions are on the are on the website. So we just have a quick question on fabric. Going back to fabric, guys. Yeah. Um, which chairs can be made with the Fusion four-way fabric or is it just on air comfort? No, so so any of the Oscar chairs can be made with the Fusion fabric. So there's there's four different choices of colour that Oscar offer as part of their standard fabric range for the Fusion. Um, as we discussed before, we generally have the Fusion fabric on the wear surfaces of the chair. So the, the pieces of the chair that contact the person. Um, and then on the outside surfaces of the chair, we would generally go for a more hard wearing material. Um, Oscar actually, I don't know that they'll make a chair in all fusion material for us, will they? So, I don't think so. Just because it would, uh, yeah, as you said, yeah. negatively affect how long the chair is going to last. And actually, and it, uh, aesthetically, it's a bit better for me too. Um, the colours that you can get the fusion material in, they're, they're sort of a bit clinical sort of thing. And if we can add a bit of pizzazz to the outside of it by having a different fabric, it sort of looks a bit better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mill tray. Mill tray, never done one. <laughs> so, uh, to be uh, honest with you, neither have yeah. I, but looking at it, it yeah. seems like it would be a really good option. Yeah. So yeah. I have seen one before. They um, uh, they will put a little receptacle yeah. in the front of the chair in place of the show wood yeah. um, that allows you to drop down a meal tray into the unit. Um, I suppose there's probably a reason though that we haven't done one and mm -hmm. that is the meal tray when it is hooked on yeah, yeah. to the chair also lifts up when you... Yeah, so don't leave your cup of tea on. Don't put your cup yeah. on there. Um, we've got some um, some really nice over chair or um, sort of cantilever tables that you could put yeah. beside your, your lift chair that perhaps might serve that yeah. purpose a little bit better. Yeah. Nonetheless, it is an option that's yeah. there should you... Uh, but I'm not up. sure if you lose the, the wood section of you the do. chair. Yeah, yeah so, so you have to choose. Yeah, so so as a standard, we supply our chairs with the show wood there. Um, that's it really gives a good surface for somebody to push against something firm for, for people to push against when they're standing up. So, yeah. Um, yeah. What else have we got? Casters and glides, um, etc. So, um, 50 millimeter casters are standard on the lift recline chairs. Um, so, they're the, the small little casters that you get standard with the lift chair. There are two lockable casters on the back which lock it, which um, lock the chair in place when it's in position. Um, I guess casters are good for moving around for cleaning and that sort of thing, what we discussed before. But we do have other options for larger wheels if if we need to. So um, the B24 kit has has bigger casters. Yep. Um, it's actually got 
hasn't got casters at the front, does it? The B24, it's got wheels, it's got wheels at the front yeah. that don't pivot, yeah. and then there's casters at the back of the chair. So yeah. um, that is good for moving a chair around, um, and you may want that if you if you're looking for a chair in a facility and that sort of thing, but um, not not really recommended for home. Um, I guess one thing to remember if we do remove the casters in order to stop the chair moving around on, on the surface that it's sitting on, we lose 25 to 30 mil in, in, the, in the floor to seat height. So we if can we, make that back with glides if we yeah, want to. If we want to, yeah. If you want to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, and, and it's worth noting that pretty much the only way we can drop the seat to floor height on a chair is to remove the casters. So yeah. if we need a lower seat to floor height, we are going to be sacrificing those casters. And that matters to some kind. It does, yeah. 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 But, you know, it, we've just got to sort of accommodate as best we can. Sometimes there's a compromise involved with those things and, and yeah, we just have to sort of... Glides, casters, 7,500 metal cup. Yeah. Okay, I think yeah. we're good there. Yeah. So recently, probably in the last six months, is it? Yeah, yeah. maybe last three months. Last three, three months. months. Um, they've recently, Oscar's recently offered a higher weight capacity mechanism for the airlift chairs. So previously it was 130 kilos um, for, for many to C size lift chairs. That was our weight capacity. Um, we can go up to 180 kilos weight capacity now, which is which is really good. Like there was a time there where it seemed to be I had a bunch of clients that were over the 130 kilo capacity, but weren't really in need of the the M5 chair, and we we just needed that little bump in capacity to sort of um, cover off that that situation. So that's good that that's an option now, and we can, sure. we can accommodate that. Yeah. Um, Dual motor only. Is it? Okay. There it's you go. A, it's a, a 180 dual motor mechanism. Yep. So um, we are single motor not available at 180 kilos. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where the remote's fitted. So we, we have the option of, of moving the remote over to the left hand side of the chair if we, if we want to. Um, that, you know, if somebody's had a stroke, something like that, they have use of their right hand can be quite handy. Even if they're just left handed. Even if you're just left handed, yeah. yeah why yeah. not make it fit? Yeah. Um, another another option that one of one of the OTs I work with particularly gets on every chair that we do is a pendant loop. Um, what that does is are we show us or not? Doesn't matter. Hang on, I can show us bigger. <laughs> Professional production going on here. <laughs> So what that is, it's a it's a loop of material that sits around the front of the chair and it just locates the controller in that sort of a position there. Um, stops you dropping the controller on the floor and then trying to reach out to grab it. So, so that is, it's just a nice little option that you can get. It's not very costly um, and can, can make the chair sort of a bit better, a bit better for the person. So the, the there's two things that I see, Chris, in terms of where people store the remote control. Yep. Some people put it exactly where you uh, yep. put it, put it just there, yep. um, which is hang it on the side, sort of tuck it down beside you, which is okay. Yep. Um, other people store it down, don't like it beside them, and store it down in the pocket, yep. um, like that. And uh, for finding that pocket can be challenging sometimes. Yeah, can. The pendant loop is a good way to solve that without having to, yep. to have the remote yep. at your hip. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, and it stops it dropping on the floor where people can't reach it, I guess. So, yeah. We've just had another question come through, guys, before we right. move on to the next. Um, is there any capacity to modify a chair once it's supplied? For example, change from one motor to two? Mm. So uh, we we have actually replaced entire mechanisms yeah. um, before, as you can probably appreciate. Costly. That's yeah. a costly exercise. Yeah. Um, so yeah. because yeah. the mechanisms are different with a dual motor to a single That's motor right. chair, so the whole mechanics underneath the chair really need to be changed to accommodate that extra actuator. So. Um, 
it's um, yeah, possible but not a good idea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I would agree with that. Yeah, it's probably almost yeah, no, yeah. Uh, what do we got? Okay, so um, a couple of different sort of um, left of centre options that um, we, we can offer with the chair. I've done one out of the three of these. Um, so we can have a joystick control for people that um, don't have great dexterity with their fingers. So it's basically a single motor mechanism it's going to be for. You push forward to, to lift yourself up, you call back to recline the chair. So um, that, that's that's really where, where that sort of comes in. I've never done one, but I reckon no. that's probably a good idea for people that... Well, limited vision, yeah. limited dexterity. Yeah. Um, it, it, it seems like it would be a really good idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, you going to have a joystick hanging out of your chair. Yeah. You'd want to be a um, Atari fan. Or yeah, something. yeah. Well, you know, why not? Um, the manual recline mechanism. So we can we can offer the chairs with without the electric lift and electric recline and, and footrest functions. I guess where I've done this sort of thing before is when people want two matching chairs. However, they don't require both of those chairs to have the, the lift and recline functions. It's so, not actually that much no, cheaper. No, yeah, no. So they, they don't make a lot of them, I guess, and it's economy of scale sort of thing, and it's it's, it's something that can be done, but yeah, um, don't do a lot of them. And the rocker and manual recline, sort of what we discussed before, I guess, you, you, you can have the rocker mechanism in the chair, um, but you lose the, the, the lift function of the chair. So the electrics. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Side pocket. Uh, yep, that's sort of what we talked about before. Um, so um, when you change the controller from one side to the other, you generally get the pocket. The pocket goes the with pocket it. Goes with it. Some people like to do that. Okay. Yeah, you know, you want yeah. change for your TV. Yeah, the TV one side. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, show wood um, as a standard. We supply the, ship, the chairs with um, with the wood on the end of the armrest. It's a really good surface for, for people to push off against. There's four different colour options there for those for that show wood. Um, we generally supply the, I think it's the walnut one with the our chairs, which seems to work well most of the time. That's so the default, I think. There. Actually, I think the mahogany. Is it mahogany? mahogany. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. there, there are options to change that wood, and you can also remove the wood. Um, from from the front of the chair as well, should you want to. So Just, yeah, keeping in mind that it takes away some of the benefits yeah. that you you have there. So yeah. people do that, I think, for a step. Yeah, just reasons. aesthetic reason. If they've got a couch that sort of looks similar already, they want to um they want to fit it in. So we'll start looking at some of the the models of chairs now and where we might use them. Um, the bar one with the three bolt three roll backrest is really the, the bread and butter chair that we supply here. Um, we can configure it to suit most people um, and it's the backrest that most people find comfortable. I find just having that extra ability to adjust those top two back rollers really helpful, um, particularly um, you know, after the chair's been delivered, that sort of thing. If we just need to tweak it a bit, having that ability to adjust that 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 um, local and those backrests is really really an immersive good. medium yep. for your shoulder blades. Yeah, seems to work better than the other option you'll see in a minute, the Hudson, which yep. is quite a firm medium. Yeah. Um, just the way that your body moves on the backrest, yep. this tends to work better. I, I guess when I'm trialing chairs, I try not to. Um, put my thoughts onto people. I like to let them tell us sort of what they're feeling in, in regards to the backrest because you don't want to say to somebody, look, well, nine out of 10 take a bar on, but they like the Hudson, but because everybody else goes the other one, they just have the other one. So yeah. I, I guess I guess I sort of let them sit in the chair and, and gauge their feedback and, and sort of go from there. But um, yeah, the bar one chair is the one that we do the most of. So available in mini, which is the smaller size, obviously, A, B and C. 
Um, so there's four, four standard sizes of chair, all of which are customizable with all those options that we talked about before. Um, and yeah, that, that's really the chair that we do the most of. So. Okay, the Hudson is the other chair. So the Hudson actually has um, a, a firm sort of a foam uh, material three quarters the way up the back there. So same feeling as what's in the bottom roll in a Barwon yep. is in the bottom roll on a Hudson. Yeah, it just occupies twice as much space. Twice as much space. We can do the softer memory foam in that Hudson backrest also. Um, I don't know why you would do that when you could have a Barwon, I guess. Um, some some people like the Hudson, so it's an option there. Some people just like a yeah, firm some people just like a firm backrest. backrest. Yep. You know. Yep. Uh, yep. Yeah. yeah. But but yeah, available again with all those customizations that we that we discussed earlier. Four sizes again, and they are the same mechanism underneath as the as the bar one. Um, the vertical lift chair is what we discussed before. I would I would say they're reasonably costly. A vertical lift chair, so um, they're, they're sort of more than double the price of a standard lift chair. Um, they need to be more, more sort of highly engineered, I guess. Underneath the frame needs to be stronger, yeah. more material in there, um, that sort of thing. Because when you're at height, obviously you become less stable. So what they do is they they put more weight and more material in the base of the chair. Yeah. So that um, so that the, the chair is steady when it's at height. So um, they are good for the application that you you need to use them for. Um, but uh, yeah, they can they can be a little bit expensive, I guess. Um, I only ever done a couple of them, and they've been for very specific sort of purposes. But if you do have that client that requires that that vertical lift. Um, the option is there. Uh, also, they're a little bit more customizable than the other ones because we can put in um, anterior tilt and we can also put in posterior tilt into those chairs as well. So um, they do go out completely flat, so they can be good for um, people that need to be, you know, have wound stress and that sort of thing at a height. Um, they can be they can be good for that also. Um, just had a little comment come through um, from Alison. Chris, yep. she, she just mentioned that she found it's good to be able to adjust the bar when headrest and yep. someone who had a hand me down chair. This really helped her set it better for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I guess that's just a little trick that, that we can use here and that we can pass on to you guys that should you need to adjust that, that backrest, that, that's possible. Okay, next. Yep. So the M5 is a chair that we actually do a, a, a few of these days. Um, the, we're finding that sort of the population is getting bigger as, as, as we go along and more people are requiring a, a chair that suits their purposes. So we have a significant weight capacity of 320 kilos for the, for the lift chair, but the real problem that we find with 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 larger people is the weight in their legs. So people that are a bit larger often retain a lot of fluid in their legs. Um, a standard lift chair's footrest mechanism generally isn't up to the task of, of, of accommodating those legs. So the, the real party trick of the M5 is the 80 kilo footrest capacity. So it's got a couple of drawer slides that come out. Um, and you can actually hang 80 kilos off the footrest mechanism on its own. So um, the first thing that goes on a lift chair with a bigger person is often that footrest mechanism. And if we can cover that off with with um, with with a better design of chair, we, we can do it. So um, you get a few different options with the M5. It starts off with a 650 millimeter width. Um, a standard chair is 540. Yeah. Um, take. Yeah. So 650, which is which is this one here, um, and they can go up to an 850 as well. 
So an 850, we could fit me and Jeremy on it, no problem. Um, and some people really require that size of chair. So um, it's good that we have, we have that option available. Um, they come with the 24 volt battery backup, so it's a larger battery mechanism than the, than the standard one. So um, you, you still have the chair plugged in, but it's got it's got the the bigger battery, so you can operate the chair without it being plugged in as well, should you need to. Um, it's the the highest rated recliner on the market, and it's really a custom tool for for a special job sort of thing. So um, that. Two bucks worth of recliner. Yep. They're, it's a niche product that's made in relatively low volume. Yep. The mechanism for it's made in Australia, yep. um, engineered by Oscar Furniture. Yep. Um, yeah, we're fortunate that we have the 180 dual yep. mechanism to go in our standard, um, our standard Oscar Hudson Barwon range now. But for those who need it, um, yeah. You know, this is a great tool to have in our and, and often people that are a bit bigger, they can. We don't want them to be just bedridden all the time. Mm -hmm. If we can get them up and into a couple of different positions during the day, it can be really helpful in regards to a lot of things like pressure care issues and all sorts of just things. General health, just general health and state of health, mind, right? Mental health and that sort of thing. So yeah. Um, it's, it is a specific tool for the job, but it's when you need it. When you need it, you need it. Yeah. So the B24 is, is, as we sort of discussed before, which is the, it's, a, it's basically a bar on lift chair with big wheels and a battery. Um, it is customizable as, as the other, as the other chairs are as well. So, yeah. Spoken about that one a little bit. Yeah. The Guardian, um, haven't done a whole heap of these, but um, really good for facility sort of um, application. There's minimal stitching on it, um, which helps with um, uh, antibacterial sort of sort of things. So, chair that's really designed about being around being the last word in ease of infection. Yeah, control. infection control. That's the words. Yeah, I for, yeah. we're talking about a chair here that um, we can, you'll see they come. Mostly upholstered in the fusion type fabrics, yep. minimal seams. We're talking about a chair here that can be wiped down after patient use yep. um, and and um, kept nice. It's also got covers that are relatively easy to replace. So yep. in a hospital or facility setting where multiple users and, and heavy use um, on a communal type basis is required, yep. we can refurbish the chairs, these sorts of chairs, much more easily than yeah, that might be more chairs. suited to home use. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, you know, your, your houses, your DHHS houses or whatever, that sort of area might be somewhere where you consider that sort of a chair. Okay, so some just some static chairs there. So the Churchill chair, which is um, it is adjustable in well, it's customizable in height. It's not height adjustable, so um, we can we can alter the floor to seat height on those. And I think that's about all we can do on them. Um, they aren't, aren't a bad sort of chair. They're for people that really don't want to have a big bulky sort of recliner in their in their house. Um, and there's uh, the the little footrester there that that. We often supply with it, which is just a place to put your feet. Um, that actually has a rocking mechanism on it, and it is, is quite comfortable when you sit in it in conjunction with the with the chair. The footrest. The footrest. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're gonna just sort of step away from the the Oscar stuff here for I a second. I suppose perhaps before we do that, Chris, uh, if the audience has any questions, oh, we yeah. might just yep. wait a second. Yep. Oh, specifically on the Oscar, it's it, please. We've got all of these chairs in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we just let it rest for a moment whilst we um, allow the audience to ask any questions. And if there hasn't been any questions in the next minute or so, we'll. We'll move on. Mm. So yeah, so we'll move away from the, the Oscar chairs for a moment. Um, we've got a couple of other products that we supply that fill sort of a, a, a bit of a hole where we need to supply something a bit different to an Oscar chair. Um, 
Air Comfort Chair is made by Take Air, so um, they're, they're another company that, that we deal with for most of the white goods and that sort of thing. So um, another Australian made another chair. Another Australian made chair. So um, they do a really good job of providing a really soft surface for the people that want that to sit in. Um, so they have the, the fusion type material on the might just bring it forward. Okay, uh, like so. So I have the fusion type material and a really soft foam um, that is underneath the material. They also have um, air bladders in the chair. So there's four air bladders. There's one in the headrest here, backrest, seat base, and there's also one in the footrest. Um, what I find with these chairs is a little bit of inflation goes a long way in regards to those bladders. Um, I find if people get into them and adjust them themselves, they tend to overinflate them and it feels like they're sitting on a football sort of thing. What we're really looking for is just a little bit of support, but a maximum sort of amount of immersion when we're sitting in these chairs. Um, so it's, it suits a specific role. Some people, when they sit in them, they just love them and that's the chair for them because they are so soft and compliant. Other people, they don't provide the support that's necessary for them to be comfortable. Not a lot so, of structure in no, the old air no, comfort chair. No. Air comfort also make our, um, our fallout style chair. Yeah, so the evolution and, chairs, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're talking about really um, blanket blanket pressure care for those who, who need it. Yeah, yeah. And, and they really are for the person that sits in it and they go, oh, this is this is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. um, to me, it's either a love or hate sort of a thing with an air comfort chair. We don't have the ability to customise them as we do with the Oscar chairs. Um, so basically there's three sizes, I think. There's a small, a medium and a large. You got it. Um, and we have single motor and dual motor um, options for these chairs. Often, Chris, um, we find that people who are in need of this sort of pressure care um, chair, they need it fairly quickly, yep. um, which is why we try to keep a range of these in stock for, yep. for quick delivery. Yep. To me, when we were talking about the Roho section cut out for the Oscar chair before, I would be more inclined to go with this if that's what's required. Um, it's going to provide that soft surface not only for your backside but for your back as well. Less to go wrong. Less to go wrong. And yeah. you can try the finished product. Yeah, that's which right. Which is a big thing that you miss out on with a customised product yeah. like a, a Roho cushion insert. Yeah. It'd be really challenging to say, well, it's going to be like this. Yeah. Uh, without actually physically without trying. Without actually it. trying. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, a, a, a great option for the people that want it. Um, you can get it in the in the macro suede fabric as well. There is a colour. There's a charcoal sort of colour that you can get it in. Um, but um, we most, find that that takes a lot does. away from the pressure, yeah. uh, from the immersion um, that you would get out of a chair with stretchy fabric. This this fusion material is really quite soft and supple, and it does stretch in all directions, which means that when you sit in it. It, it really does conform well. Yeah. Okay. So we have another chair from Cake here. Um, it's called the. Which one's this one? The Donatello? One of the Ninja Turtles. One of the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> it's not Raphael. <laughs> um, so, this chair actually has four motors in it. So, the controller has eight, ten buttons on it. So, not really for your person that is. Um, struggling a little bit cognitively and that sort of thing because there's there's quite a few buttons on the on the controller itself the 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 chair is um similar to a to an oscar dual motor chair in that you can um 
operate the footrest and the, and the backrest independently of each other. You also have two additional actuators in the chair, which um, operate uh, the lumbar region here and also the headrest region there. So um, it's really for people that want that extra support in their lumbar region um, or they need extra head support. So um, I'll just show you from a side on view. You can really see. Can you see that there? Yeah, I think that's good. So Doesn't work. What I'm trying to do is get that headrest to work. Oh, okay, just hold on one one moment. Sorry, technical difficulties. That's all right. We're getting them fixed. While you're um just getting that chair ready to go, we had a question. Yep. Um, someone has said they've actually had a client complain that their Oscar seat was a bit hard and Jeremy had advised to add a cushion. Is this something that sometimes does need to be done? Yeah, um, so if we're going to add a cushion to, to a seat, um, my preference is for something that's very thin. Um, I would go with an Equigel or with a Rojo Mosaic. Um, cushion because we don't really want to alter that floor to seat height too much. I've had the same thing when I've supplied chairs in leather um, that the seat base they find it very hard so um, and that that is the feedback that I've had sometimes for and, and I guess that sort of highlights the importance of fabric choice when we're when we're looking at a chair as well so um, yeah so there's a couple of ways around that, I guess. My, my first preference would always be to try and accommodate the pressure care needs of the client yep. um, in, in the structure of the chair. And that would be a, an air comfort chair or something like that. Yep. I'm not sure about the specific, um, the specific surrounding that case, but it, it is um, possible to put a pressure care cushion on yep. a lift chair as long as the pressure care cushion is appropriate for the um, for the job. Yep. Um, just keeping in mind that, it, as Chris said, it does change the seat to floor height of the chair and we need to make sure that the postural fit is, uh, yeah. is okay. So I always ask it now when I'm doing a trial, how's that seat base for you? Is that comfortable or is it not? Um, just about every time everybody says yeah yeah that's good mm -hmm. they sit in it for a few hours and maybe they're they're sort of, they, they they change their mind but, um, sit for long enough and uh, and it know. does wear in the yeah. chairs do wear in a bit over time as well like you get some some sort of um pliability to that foam as as you sit in the chair over time so mm -hmm. yeah okay now back to your I think you just mentioned that it was a it was a client who had compared like a, a higher worn in chair to a, her brand new one. That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm pressing the headrest button on this chair. So as you can see, that headrest actually comes for quite a fair way with um, this, this Donatello chair. Um, it sort of takes the place of the head pillow that we talked about on the on the Oscar chairs that we had before. Um, if you recline the chair back a fair way, it can be quite handy to be able to lift that headrest up to give you some neck support when you're sitting in the chair watching TV, that sort of thing. Um, the other function that this chair's got that the other ones don't have is it has a lumbar support as well. You can't really see it there, but there's an actuator that works into the back of the the back of the backrest here and pushes in against your lumbar region in your back. Um, people that need that extra support in their backrest, um, either because they're slouched over or they need a bit of extra push in the lower part of their back, this is really good for accommodating that. Um, and you can do a fair range of motion in it. So you're not just sort of stuck with a, a static position of your backrest. So yeah. 
I guess I guess it's it's something that's relatively new for us, and we've had positive feedback in regards to being able to position yourself um, differently in that with that backrest. So a couple of things about this chair from my perspective. Um, the real value of a four motor lift chair over a two motor lift chair um, is that you can change your position um, more comprehensively. Yeah, dynamically right? as you go. Yeah. You know, um, you get a sore neck and you can adjust your back. back. Yep. Your back's feeling a bit funny. And sometimes that variation in posture can be really helpful in managing pain when you're um, when you're sitting for long periods of time. Yeah. Right? So there's um, a fair bit of bit of value in that. So yeah, we've got dual motor mechanism as well. So we can alter the, the recline that the backrest is. We can alter the foot position. Um, and it's also a lift chair as well. So yeah. um, so it does have the standard sort of lifting function of the, of the chair. So this is a relatively new one for us and we've had really good feedback from, from the clients that have, that have used this chair that, that require this sort of this, this sort of chair. Not customizable. Available um, in two sizes. Two sizes, yep. This is the large and there is a small. There is a small. There's also some different backrests available for this one. So this one is what we call a backrest with lateral support. So you can see these bolsters on the side here um, give you some positioning when you're sitting in the chair. Um, and it's really quite a nice snug fit around the side there for, for people that want that sort of thing. Um, the other backrest that we can have for it. So that's a more standard sort of backrest. They zip off and we can we can put this, this backrest on. There's a short and a tall with these. Um, I had a look. I reckon you could take some blow fill out of that if you needed to. And that actually looks pretty familiar, that background shape there, Chris. Yeah, it does, doesn't <laughs> it? Does. It does, does that. Yeah, so um, not foam in the bottom, but they are all blow fill in those ones. Um, but yeah, so it's quite a nice looking chair, I feel. You it's, can have it's, any colour you like as, as long, long as, as it's this gray. One. Yeah, and. Um, it doesn't have wheels on it. That's that's another thing, and it is wider than a standard doorway. So, so Chris loves trialing it in people's homes. So if there's any chance at all, if you're considering this chair, it would be preferable for me, especially if we could do it sort of in the showroom. It's not that big a deal for me to bring it out to somebody's house, but I did it the other day, and um, it wasn't a hassle at all. I just um, it, it's. Yeah. It's just not quite as easy as it's not quite as easy, easy as an Oscar chair. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I would encourage you all at any stage if you about any of the showrooms, if you're in Morwell or if you're in Warrigal or whatever, please come in and have a look. I often try to get the therapist to sit in the chairs rather than just having the people themselves sitting in the chairs so that they can get an idea of it how the chairs feel as well. So um, I would I would encourage you to come by and, um, and and have a look at the chairs if you've got the chance. What else have we got? Funding. Oh yeah, funding, okay. So I think the the main sort of funding bodies that that support us in, in supplying these chairs are really the home care packages. And um, and DVA that sort of thing. So we do we do a lot of lot of chairs for DVA veterans. Um, if you go to the Country Care Group um, portal, you can see on there the the chairs that are available. You can actually see all the products that are available to veterans on the DVA contract, and the TAC contract is also on there as well. Um, so. As far as as far as organising a trial for a DVA veteran, um, it's just like any other any other equipment trial that we do. Um, we generally send back a a form with the um, DVA numbers that you need to fill out on the RAP form. Um, we try to make that sort of process as easy as possible. Uh, um, you guys fill out the wrap form, send it back to us, and, and we process it from there, basically. So, 
Um, so I just chime in in terms of your DBA trials. Yep. It's um, best practice to send in a rat form prior to a trial. Okay. Yep. Um, and say that um, it mark clearly on the equipment specification section that it, the equipment is for trial. We'll see that. Um, we'll be able to process that in our portal prior to coming out and doing a trial with the veteran and they, the team at the country care group um, can make sure that the eligibility criteria are met in advance of a trial. Yeah. If it turns out during the trial that the product that we have is successful and the client is happy with the um, with the check, we can actually leave that sort of uh, product out there yep. following a trial, assuming no customizations are required, of course. So, so I guess that's where it comes back to to giving us as close a, a sort of a, an idea of the size chair that a person requires and different options that they might like. Um, if we can, if we can get that information up front, um, it can make it a little bit easier for everybody. The client doesn't have to wait six to eight weeks for their chair, um, and we can leave it on the day. So, yeah, yeah. So DVA TAC, many of these chairs. Uh, sorry, back on DVA. The M5 is the only chair that we've talked about today that requires prior approval. Yeah. Um, and would need a letter of clinical justification submitted with it. The Oscar Barwin, Oscar Hudson, um, the Olivio Donatello range and the Air Comfort range are all um, yep. prior, all approved. Um, so all of those shares that I just mentioned are TAC contracted items, but clinical justification would be required for prescription. Mm -hmm. um, NDIS, we're going to be quite required yep. um, uh, in uh, most cases. We have heard about some prior approval financial thresholds for, for, um, NDIS. for partic NDIS participants. Um, we're yet to see a lot of that. Yep. Um, and my age care, so that's your home care packages. We are um, just submitting quotes. Yep, so submitting quotes for that. Practice. Yep. Um, yeah, I guess that's another thing that we need to sort of discuss is the, the lead time on, on, on these products. So the, the air comforts and the, the Donatellos, we are, we are endeavouring to keep in stock in the standard fabric range for the, for the air comfort. The suede is an option, um, however it extends the lead time for the air comforts. Mm. The Donatellos are as they come. So um, we've got the small and the large in stock with the different backrest options. So we're, we're pretty, we're getting pretty good with supply on those. Um, we try to carry a range of the Oscar chairs in stock in the different sizes and different motors. There are so many fabric options, but and the most of the time I've found they do require a bit of customization to get them right. Yeah. So um, we are generally looking at eight eight weeks Currently. at this point in time for supply of, of Oscar lift chairs. So that is something to keep in mind. We do have a rental fleet of, of these chairs that we can offer um, to people um, if they if they if they need a chair immediately. I guess uh, that is one way to sort of get out of trouble. It might not fit them spot on like the custom chair would, but it's something that, that we can offer. As an interim measure. As an interim measure, yeah. yeah. Uh, and the colours that we keep in stock, our, our hope is to keep a um, single and dual motor lift chair in each size mm. available in stock at all times. Um, the challenge is that colour is important to a lot of people, it particularly is. if you're getting yep. this sort of sort of lift chair. And um, with the, let's say, 25, 30 odd colour choices there are, you can imagine how many configurations that would yeah. be. So, yeah. 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 That, that is one thing I've learned about lift chairs, that colour is incredibly important to people, which is, which is uh, okay, it's just, yeah. It's one of the choices. One of the get choices. Out, yeah. yeah, you know, and, yeah. Uh, and people like that freedom. So that's it. How did we go? Yeah. <laughs> Is everybody asleep? Yeah. Is people still there? Or? <laughs> 
Um, so now is just a time for questions. We will leave the live event open for another um, five or ten minutes. Yeah. If you have any questions, um, then feel free to send them on in in the Q and A section. Um, any any feedback, um, we'd we'd love to hear it. Yeah. So. I guess I should say um, we've got another session coming up. Well, we're just waiting for questions to come through. We've got another session coming up um, towards the end of September, I believe it is. Um, so that will be another clinical education webinar that we're going to run. If any of you joined in, um, I think it was back in May, we put on a session with Andy from Patient Handling, and we're going to continue that with him, and we're going to do an introduction to ceiling hoists. So if anyone is interested in that, um, I'll also put the registration link here. Um, in the chat section, and we'd love to have you at that one as well. So, yeah. I think that'll be an exciting session. Ceiling track hoists are something that um, I think are underutilised yeah. in a home care environment. Really, we um, we see a lot of um, a lot of carers struggling, really struggling, pushing around those mobile floor hoists yeah. on on carpeted surfaces that really aren't conducive to um, to that sort of thing. And frankly, I think that might be a key driver of people going into aged care or into care mm. a lot earlier mm. because the um, the manual handling is just too overwhelming for, for the people who... Mm. Ceiling track always can be something that's really not too obtrusive these days, can't it? Like yeah. it it's just... And it makes a, such a difference. Yeah, and it does, yeah. A world of difference for the people who... Um, so it'd be an interesting one. It was good last day, wasn't it? Yep. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think we'll shut it down there. Um, thanks everybody. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for joining us here today. It was good. Yep. Well yeah. done, Chris. You've uh, you've done uh, done a good job there. Okay. Any questions? Shout out. We're signing out. See ya. Thanks, guys. Bye bye.